I'm sitting here in a wonderful, beautiful landscaped rainforest. But I was brought up in bush life and uh, in the Atherton Tablelands. My Aboriginal name is Mungan Bana. Mungan means mountain and Bana means water. Yeah, I want to honour our Heavenly Father, our Creator of the heavens and the earth. And also I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners on the land that we are in. Mum and Dad never went past grade four because in those times there, our government policies, especially in Queensland, didn't want Indigenous people to uh, have a good education. But you know, what was for wrong, God turned around for good and they found themselves in very instrumental and, and, and key areas. Dad and Mum always talked, us, talked to us good um, and gave us good things and, and characters. And it's important that the, the, the characters of, of their life and the witness there of their life really shone through, through the family. You know, we would just unashamedly say, Dad, I love you, and he'd say, Son, I love you. We were taught good values, and to where I am there now, I am so thankful. When the Bible talks about Malachi restoring the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children to the fathers, Dad was like that. He had his own natural children, but he had all these other um, children in the spirit, spiritual children that just loved mum and dad, and the spiritual father to our own city. Many times, the homeless people in our own city, he would visit them. They would ring him up at 12 o'clock, early hours of the morning, dad would take loaves of bread. And even if it was the only loaf of bread that it was in our house, <laughs> He would take that down, he would take the blankets and that down. He was the church without walls. He was, he was what Jesus did. When the mayor of our city would want a respected elder to come, dad was there. It was how God raised him up from those ashes to where he was, from the down and out. And my mum was the same. I actually did a painting called Honouring Your Mother and Your Father and honouring those who have gone before you, those fathers and mothers. God has important leaders, Indigenous and non-Indigenous leaders. Importantly in these days, Indigenous leaders that are, are rising up not only from the big cities, but they come from very remote and small towns and places. God is just speaking through the voices of many, of many leaders to be able to see His purposes and, and accomplish His purposes. And I believe that uh, God uh, will use us as a nation that men and women, Indigenous and non-Indigenous, but the leaders that he, he is raising are ones that just love Him and align with the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. As indigenous people, God gave them the anointing and the ability to be able to walk on the land. When they walked and prayed, they didn't have the shoes. They had bare feet just walking over the land. Indigenous people, as they walk in this land of Australia, God's just going to touch them, impact their hearts and impact their spirit. And they're going to walk in a new way, in a refreshing way with the Lord, full of vision, full of dreams and a purpose and a destiny because God does have a, a purpose and destiny for our nation. Sydney Harbour Bridge, flying down there and being on the Harbour Bridge at 6 o'clock in the morning doing some intercession and prayer and <coughs> repentance and we were in Adelaide and Perth because of... God has a wonderful plan for this nation and seeing this nation come into all that it has. I believe importantly that this nation aligns with Israel and I, I know it's blessed because of, of our alignment um, to the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. That is one of my passion is to love the Lord with all of my heart, my mind and my soul, and also to love thy neighbor as we know scripture says, but also to just worship him. I believe just delights the heart of the Lord when we come into that place and we give him all the glory and all the honor and that we see, we see him beautifully enthroned in his heavenly places. He loves us, each one of us, and that was why he went to the cross to demonstrate that per perfect love. A true reconciliation can only come about when we are truly reconciled with the Lord. I believe that as seen the pain uh, in this nation is when we have seen the founding um, fathers, the politicians, that have seen 
the discrimination from Federation and you think your founding fathers, political leaders, uh, had these discrimination policies right back then and even questioning and saying, Lord, where are the spiritual fathers in our nation, especially the indigenous spiritual fathers that will rise up with God's spirit of righteousness and justice and his love and his integrity and accountability. We have to see the spiritual Abrahams and the spiritual Sarahs in our own nation that would take up the call and stand together and to be able to father and mother a generation that is fatherless, that is motherless. One of the things that we need to see is the fathers even of our day, it's just like when Elijah, the spiritual father on earth when he was taken up to heaven and just said to him, what would you want me to, to give you before I'm taken up into heaven? And Elijah said, I might receive the double portion of your anointing. And so I believe for a baton and for a baton change, I see where there's been leaders in our nation, but the baton has to be handed on to a generation that's going to take forward, where the baton will be put in the hands of the Elijahs, the double portion of God's anointing. Thomas Miller, my grandfather, was taken away from my great-grandmother at the age of five. He never saw his great-grandmother again. When we talk about fathers, we talk about mothers, we talk about grandmothers and great-grandmothers and great-grandfathers. There is hurt, there is rejection that need to be healed and to be restored. God is beginning to just open these things up so that spiritual leaders like myself, spiritual fathers like myself, can open these wounds that have been in our nation for a long time to bring a healing. The 2008 apology of the stolen generation, my dad and my grandfather, Thomas Miller, couldn't be there. I was there at the apology of 2008, on the 13th of February, I know it so well. When that apology was, writ was read out, and the, and the finishing of those words, I was praying in there, and I believe that there were other Christians who were praying, we forgive also. And that's the key to reconciliation. I want to see this nation turn to the Lord to give him all the glory and all the honor. Pray that this land and this nation will truly be realigned and married to the Lord, our God, our Heavenly Father. May I say as fathers and mothers in this nation, walk strongly with your God, walk closely there with him, come before him with a pure heart, come before him with humility, come before him with a heart of repentance keep your eyes upon him.